Hey, I'm Miss Palma, and today we're going to review the six rules of pronoun agreement. We will examine the patterns and ultimately define those six rules, and we'll make some connections to previous lessons, specifically with our subject verb agreement when it comes to pronouns. So I want to remind you of our seven rules of subject verb agreement. Remember, we had S squared, etc. A lot of these concepts are going to be revisited today. So keep them in mind and recognize that you already have a storage space in your brain for the new rules that we're going to examine today. Rule number one, a pronoun must agree with its antecedent. Don't be afraid. Antecedent, anti, anti, a-N-T-E, a prefix, before. And all a antecedent is, is the subject that our pronoun is going to later replace. So the subject comes before it in the sentence. We're going to use a singular pronoun with a singular antecedent and a plural pronoun with a plural antecedent. Again, the antecedent is usually a noun that the pronoun replaces. For example, you could replace Sarah with she or her later on in the sentence to avoid repetition. And Sarah's our antecedent coming before. So if I wanted to take this as our first rule, we look at reminding ourselves of SP squared. When we have a singular subject, we are going to have a singular antecedent, which is that subject now that's being replaced by our pronoun in the sentence. And when we have a plural subject, we're going to need a plural pronoun. Brothers and theirs, John and his. Let's look at some examples. The lizard licked its eyeballs. Lizard is singular, so it's is singular. The lizards licked their eyeballs. Lizards, plural, their, plural. All right, let's take it a step further. If you're going to get your mind around rule number one, you need to know the differences between the singular and plural personal pronouns. Our singular ones, he, she, it, him, her, it, his, her, it's, himself, herself, itself, remember with our pronouns. There's not a single pronoun in the English language that has an apostrophe in it, so don't confuse it's with its. Our plural pronouns, they, them, theirs, their, and themselves. All right, rule number two, part one. You create a plural antecedent when you join two or more singular nouns with and. I can remind myself of a similar rule, the new puppy and the kitten. I have got my joining word, and so I have a plural subject, and I need a plural pronoun. So rule number two, part one, when that conjunctive and joins two or more subjects, we've got a plural antecedent, so our pronoun becomes plural. Well, this one is two. Okay, rule number two, part two. Remember that each and every, when they precede singular nouns joined by and, you're going to have a singular antecedent instead. Each new puppy and kitten destroys its owner's sofa. Remember, this is just like with subject verb agreement. Our rule of subject verb agreement, part two to this is when each or every precede, it doesn't matter how many things you add, you've got a singular pronoun. Just to illustrate, doesn't matter how many things we're adding, each new puppy, kitten, rabbit, tarantula, hamster, parrot, turtle, and ferret destroys its. We have a singular pronoun because each and every require that. Our next rule is very familiar again. Use caution with these three correlative conjunctive pairs, either or, neither nor, and not only but also. Only the pronoun that's closer to the antecedent is going to matter. Not only Louis, but also the Smiths fixed their Smiths is plural, there is plural. And not only the Smiths, but also Louise, Louise singular, her singular. This is very similar again, when not only, but also either or neither nor a red, red flag words appear, we're going to choose the antecedent that's closest to our verb. Okay, rule number four, part one. 
Oh, yes. Remember the indefinite pronouns. These are always singular, even when they seem plural, except for today when I'm going to introduce you to different things. So each, either, neither, anyone, anybody, anything, everybody, everyone, everything, nobody, nobody, nothing, someone, somebody, something. These are all singular. Everyone, billions of people on the whole planet. Everyone is singular and requires a singular pronoun for agreement. I'm hopeful this is very familiar. This is our rule for part one. When these singular indefinite pronouns appear, we're going to match them with singular pronouns. Let's take a look at an example. Uh, neither of my two brothers show much nonsense when they date women. Now, this might sound right, but it's wrong. We have neither, which is one of my singular pronouns, and show, doesn't end in S, is a plural verb. So I have a problem here. And to fix it, I say that neither of my two brothers shows much sense when he dates women. And we're fixing the additional verb as well. Okay. Now, this is something maybe new to map your mind, look, wrap your mind around that. When you're going to fix an agreement error, you're supposed to avoid sexist language that might offend your reader. So if I see a car and the lights are on, it might sound right, but it is wrong to say that someone left their lights on because someone is a singular indefinite pronoun and there is plural. So with a singular plural, we got a problem here. In academic writing, you've got to fix those agreements. And so the way that we look at this is avoiding sexist language. The very basis, you would need to have a singular pronoun, like someone left his or her lights on. Let's examine that a little bit further. In the 50s, way back in the day, you know, with the poodle start, handouts would have said to use the masculine pronoun exclusively, oh my, someone left his lights on. And then came the 70s and the feminist movement, and hands books began suggesting we use both genders so that we have equal representation of language. Someone left his or her lights on. While I respect the feminist movement, and I love the 50s equally, I have to say, it can present some problems. A writer who begins with he or she, or him or her, will need to be consistent. And you can see here what happens. If a student wants to improve his or her grades, he or she should walk him or herself. Therefore, he or she can request. And it, it can get pretty overwhelming. Um, there are ways that we can fix this. Uh, one way is just to avoid it altogether. In the 21st century say, hey, there's a car with its lights on and we don't have to deal with the agreement issue. We can also begin to evaluate our writing samples and make specific changes. If students want to improve their grades, they should walk themselves over to the tutoring center. There, Students can request a tutor to help them with their homework. You can begin to see how we can avoid that. We can also choose one gender and then give another example with the opposite gender. Um, there are choices. We just need to agree. On to our next rule. Rule four, part three. Some indefinite pronouns are singular or plural depending on context. Hate to break it to you. That means our original rule with subject verb agreement can't exactly apply in all instances. But we can make this something that's easy to understand if we consider <clears throat> all, any, none, more, most, some. Um, when these are used, we're going to look at the rest of the context of the sentence. So I have all, all of what? All of Beverly's hair. And hair is singular. So we're going to use a singular pronoun. All of what? All of Beverly's fingernails. Fingernails, singular or plural? Plural. Get their plural color from the bottle. Okay, so this one's a little bit more complicated. And all we decide is that some indefinite pronouns are singular or plural based on context, and we're going to be looking later in that sentence to find out. Now, collective nouns like jury, team, or committee can also pro cause some pronoun agreement problems. And basically, what we have to remember is, again, similar to the previous rule, collective nouns are singular or plural based on context. And it's going to be whether or not 
that collective group is acting together or if they're acting independently. So let's look at what that would be in um, some examples. Um, we want to remember that collective nouns are groups of people, team, jury, class, committee, army, family. And if all members are acting in unison, we'll treat that collective noun as singular and use a singular pronoun. But if all members are acting individually, arguing, disagreeing at different places at different times, then we're going to treat that noun as plural and use a plural pronoun. It's a little bit easier to see if we look at these examples. In the first one, the team celebrates its win. The team here is acting as a unit. It's doing something in unison. So team would be singular and its is a singular pronoun. Now, what about after? Team changed into their street clothes and went home happy. Now, the team is doing things individually. And so we use a plural pronoun. If you wanna worry, forget the worries about all of that, to choose they, them, there without worry, just insert a plural, prone, plural noun after your collective noun. So the team members, now we have a plural antecedent, ran out to the field to meet their opponent, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Last rule is number six, businesses, organizations, schools, these are always singular and they require singular pronouns for agreement. Uh, one urban legend is that Tico's, Tito's Tacos Palace makes its burritos with kangaroo meat. And while that might be scandalous, it's at least grammatically correct because we know that our companies, our organizations, our school, our businesses are going to require a singular pronoun to agree. Let's try this out by fixing some pronoun agreement errors. Example one, do we have any red flag words? We do. We have every. And the rule with every is that when we have singular each and every, no matter how many things we add. So we need to say that at the zoo, every lion, tiger, doesn't matter how many things you add, roared its. And its would be the singular pronoun to agree. In this next example, we have another red flag word, and that's each, and each is the same rule, law of negation. You need a singular subject that could be a singular pronoun. Her would be a choice. His would also be a choice. All right, number three, both Professor Williams and her students, we've got one plus one is two, plural subject, plural verb, this one, is correct. One plus one is two. Not only my two dogs, but also Buster. I see my red flag, not only, but also. And I know that my rule with my conjunctives is that I'm, pairs is that I'm going to choose my subject that's closest to the verb. So Buster is going to become my subject. And that's a boy, him. And now I agree. Oh no, someone left their greasy french fries on on the essay. Mm. Yeah, sorry about your luck there, but at least you can express yourself grammatically correctly while you're complaining. So what's the problem here? Someone is a singular indefinite pronoun. There is plural. We would need to change it. We could change it to his. We could change it to her. We could change it to his or her. And then we would have agreement. Now keep in mind that collective nouns, when we're looking at this rule in action, it's is that collective group acting as a group together or are they acting independently? All right, so the class cheered their approval. This is something they're doing together. If we're doing it together, the class is singular and we would require a singular subject and pronoun. And this would fix our problem. Nick loves Tito's Taco Palace, but they use so much MSG as flavoring that he sneezes for an hour after eating a single corn chip. Where's our problem here? Oh, we have a company and companies are singular. So what do we need to change? We need to change they, it. We would also need to change our verb we use to use this to match our subject verb. None of Sabrina's friends. Okay, this is one of those instances where we remember that some indefinite pronouns are singular or plural based on context. So it's none of Sabrina's friends, plural, 
will loan one of their pencils, all right? Either of those, either, either, either. These are always singular. We need to change there. It's, and now we have agreement. All right, now for our final example, the party committee. Oh, committee. This is one of our collective nouns. So we need to decide, are they acting independently or as a group? If they're unanimously deciding something, then they're acting collectively. We're going to change they to it, and now we have agreement. I realize that we've covered a lot of bases today. We've identified some patterns. We've examined the six rules of point on agreement, and we've made connections to how our understanding of subject verb agreement applies here. And ultimately, we've examined those six rules, sp squared, our one plus one is two, and each and every, where we're getting singular pronouns. Rule number three, where our conjunctive pairs sneak in and we're choosing our subject as an antecedent that's closest to the verb for agreement. We are looking at our rule four, our indefinite pronouns, part one, what they are, and part two, how to avoid sexist language, part three, remembering that there are some indefinite pronouns that are going to be singular or plural based on context, and we have to look later in the sentence to form agreement. Rule number five, our collective nouns are singular or plural based on context, very reminiscent of rule four, part three. If our group is acting collectively together, then we're going to have a singular pronoun. And if our group or team is acting independently, then we will have plural pronoun. Finally, our schools, organization, businesses, these are always singular and will require a singular pronoun. I hope we've examined these rules in such a way that you can begin to make some more independent application of these concepts and make improvements to your own writing and understanding of forming more complicated sentences that are grammatically pleasing.